Chapters 32 through 36 of the Book of Numbers from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Farrar Fenton. The Book of Numbers, chapters 32 through 36. Chapter 32. But the number of cattle belonging to the sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad was very numerous, and they saw that the district of Yazer and the district of Gilad were places for cattle. So the sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben came to Moses and Eleazar the priest and the princes of the parliament to say, Ataroth and Diban and Nimrah and Keshbon and Alela and Shibma and Nebo and Ban, the country that the ever-living has conquered before the commonwealth of Israel is a place for cattle, and your servants possess cattle. And, they continued, if then your servants have found favor in your eyes, give this district to your servants to possess, and we will not pass over the Jordan. But Moses said to the sons of Gad and to the sons of Reuben, your brothers are going over the Jordan, and would you stay here? Why should you discourage the hearts of the children of Israel from passing to the country which the ever-living has given to them? Your fathers did the same when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to survey the country when they proceeded to the brook of Ashkal, and examined the country, and discouraged the hearts of the children of Israel, so that they would not go to the land which the ever-living had given them. And the anger of Jehovah burnt at that time, and he declared, saying, the men who come up out of the Mitzrayim from twenty years old and upwards shall not see the country which I promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, for they are not sincerely following me, except Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua the son of Nun, who sincerely followed the ever-living. The anger of Jehovah consequently burnt against Israel, and they wandered forty years in the wilderness, until all that generation who had done wrong in the sight of the ever-living had died. And now you arise in the place of your fathers to continue the burning anger of the Lord against Israel, for you are turning back from him, and will cause him to retain them in the wilderness and consume all this people. But they pressed upon him and said, we will build folds to guard our sheep and cities for our children, but we ourselves are ready for action, and will advance ardently before the children of Israel to their districts wherever they may go. But our children can rest in the fortified towns guarded from the inhabitants of the country. We will not return to our homes until the children of Israel have each been put into possession of his estate and we will not inherit over the Jordan, nor westward, but our possessions shall be to the west of the fords of the Jordan. Then Moses replied to them, If you will do this, if you will be ready for action before the ever-living in the war, and pass fully armed over the Jordan before the ever-living until his enemies are driven from before him, then, when the country is subdued to Jehovah, you may return." and this district shall be given you from the ever-living and from Israel, and this country shall be yours to possess it in the presence of the Lord. But if you will not do so, then you will sin against the ever-living, and you know the punishment for sin that will meet you. You can build towns for your children and folds for your flocks, and return when you have done so. The sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben replied to Moses, saying, your servants will do as our Lord commands. Our children, wives, and cattle shall be here in the cities of Gilad, but your servants will pass over fully equipped for war with the army of the ever-living, as your lordship has said. Then Moses convoked Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the chief fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. And Moses said to them, if the sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben pass over the Jordan fully equipped for the war of the ever-living, and subdue the country before you, then you shall give them the land of Gilad for a possession. But if they do not go over ready for action, then they shall only inherit in the land of Canaan. The sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben answered, saying, Your servants will do what the ever-living has said. We will pass over fully equipped before the ever-living to the land of Canaan, and we will possess our inheritance on this side of the Jordan. 
so moses gave to the sons of gad and the sons of reuben and the half tribe of manasseh the son of joseph the kingdoms of sihon king of the amorites and the kingdoms of og king of bashan the land and its towns with the surrounding country of the villages so the sons of gad built dibon and ataroth and arar and ataroth shufan and jazer and igbaka and beth minra and beth horon fortified towns with folds for sheep and the sons of reuben built keshbon and alela kiriathaim and athbano and athbalmaon changing its name and sibma and they called bethmoth shemoth these were the towns they built then the sons of machir the son of manasseh marched to gilad and captured it and drove out the amorites who were in it so moses gave gilad to machir the descendant of manasseh and he occupied it then Yair, the son of Manasseh, marched and captured some forts, and called them the forts of Yair. Then Nobak marched and captured Kanef and its villages, and named it Nobak, after his own name. Chapter 33 These are the marches of the children of Israel who came under the direction of Moses and Aaron from the land of the Mitzrayim by their armies, for moses registered their advance by marches by instructions from the ever-living and these are the marches they advanced by they marched first from rameses in the first month upon the fifteenth day of the first month after the morning of the passover the children of israel advanced with a high hand in the sight of all mitzrayim whilst the mitzrayites were burying those whom jehovah had killed among them all their firstborn and jehovah also executed justice upon their gods so the children of Israel marched from Ramesses and pitched their tents at Scuth. Then they marched from Scuth and pitched at Atham, which is on the border of the desert. Then they marched from Atham and pitched and occupied the mouth of Hakaroth, which is opposite Belzaphon, and pitched before the fortress. Then they marched from Hakiroth and passed over through the sea to the desert, and advanced in that direction three days to the desert of Atham and pitched at Mara then they marched from mara and came to elam and there were at elam twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees so they pitched there then they returned from elam and pitched at the sea of suf then they marched from the sea of suf and pitched in the desert of zin then they marched from the desert of zin and pitched at dafaka then they marched from dafaka and pitched in alush then they marched from alush and pitched in rephidim but there was no water there for the people to drink. Then they marched from Rephidim and pitched in the desert of Sinai. Then they marched from the desert of Sinai and pitched in Kibroth Hafava. Then they marched from Kibroth Hafava and pitched in Katsaroth. Then they marched from Katsaroth and pitched in Rithma. Then they marched from Rithma and pitched in Rimon Fartz. Then they marched from Rimon Fartz and pitched in Libna. Then they marched from Libna and pitched in Risa. Then they marched from Risa and pitched in Kalatha. Then they marched from Kalatha and pitched at Mount Shafir. Then they marched from Mount Shafir and pitched in Karada. Then they marched from Karada and pitched in Makloth. Then they marched from Makloth and pitched in Thakaf. Then they marched from Thakaf and pitched in Tharak. Then they marched from Tharak and pitched in Mithaka. Then they marched from Mithaka and pitched in Kashmona. Then they marched from Kashmona and pitched in Mosoroth. Then they marched from Mosoroth and pitched in among the Beni Yakan. Then they marched from the Beni Yakan and pitched in the Vale of Gadgad. Then they marched from the Vale of Gadgad and encamped in Yatbatha. Then they marched from Yatbatha and encamped in Abarona. Then they marched from Abarona and encamped in Atzin Gaber. Then they marched from Atzin Gaber and encamped in the desert of Sin. Then they marched from Kadesh and encamped at the Peak Hill, on the borders of the land of Moab, and Aaron the priest ascended the Peak Hill by the order of the ever living, and died there, in the fortieth year from the coming of the children of Israel out of Mitzer, on the first of the fifth month. And Aaron was a hundred and twenty three years old at his death on the Peak Hill. When the Canaanite king of Arad heard that the children of Israel were advancing by the south country, he occupied the Peak Hill. So they marched from the Peak Hill and encamped at Salmona. 
Then they marched from Salmona and encamped at Phonan. Then they marched from Phonan and encamped at Aboth. Then they marched from Aboth and encamped at Avi, at the passes on the border of Moab. Then they marched from Avi and encamped at Dibon Gad. Then they marched from Dibon Gad and encamped at Almon. Then they marched from Almon by Diblathim and encamped at the hills of the passes opposite to Nebo. Then they marched from the hills of the passes and encamped at the fords of Moab on the Jordan. Then they extended along the Jordan from Beth Yeshemoth to the Acacia Meadows upon the fords of Moab. There the ever living spoke to Moses at the fords of Moab opposite Jericho, commanding, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, Now you are about to pass over the Jordan to the land of Canaan. You shall drive out all the possessors of that country before you, and destroy them and their towers, and destroy all those bronze idols, and destroy all their high places, and seize the country. For I have given the land to you to possess, but you shall divide the land by lots to your families. To the large you shall increase the portions, and to the small you shall lessen the portions. Whatever lot falls to any one shall be his, and apportioned to him in the tribe of his fathers. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land who occupy it, the remainder of them will be pricks in your eyes, and thorns in your sides, and a torment to you in the land where you reside. And I will do to you as I intended to do to them. Chapter 34 The ever-living also spoke to Moses to say, Command the children of Israel, and say to them, Now you are come to the land of Canaan, the land which has fallen to you to inherit, the land of Canaan with her surroundings. And they shall be yours on the south side from the wilderness of Tzin on the borders of Edom. These are your borders south, from the end of the salt sea eastward, and along from there your boundary towards the south shall be from the ascent of Akrabim and across to Tzin, then turn up from the south to Kadesh Barnea, and proceed to the castle of Adar, and pass over to Atzinar. Then the boundary turning from Atzman towards the river of Mitzer shall proceed to the west, and your boundary shall be the sea, the great sea. That shall be your boundary on the west. And this shall be your boundary on the north. You shall mark out from the great sea at the hill of hills. From the hill of hills you shall mark out to the pass of Kamaf, and take a line to the borders of Tzada. Thence your northern boundary shall start and proceed to Katsar Einan, that shall be your border to the north. Then you shall mark your eastern boundary from Katsar Einan to Shafna, and the frontier shall run from Shafna with Ribla on the east to Ayin, where the line shall descend and extend to the eastern shoulder of the lake of Kinneroth. Thence the frontier shall run by the Jordan and extend to the Salt Sea. This shall be your country with its surrounding bounds. Therefore Moses commanded the children of Israel, saying, This is the country which you shall divide by lot, which the ever-living has commanded to give to the nine and a half tribes, because the tribe of Reuben have taken for their ancestors' house, and the tribe of the sons of Gad for their ancestors' house, with the house of Ephraim and the half-tribe of Manasseh, have taken their share. These two tribes and the half-tribe have taken their shares before the Jordan opposite Jericho. The ever-living also spoke to Moses, commanding, these two men shall divide the land for you, Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, with one prince from each of the tribes who shall superintend the division of the land. And these are the names of the men. From the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Jephunneh. From the tribe of the sons of Simeon, Shamuel the son of Amihud. From the tribe of Benjamin, Alidad the son of Kislon. From the tribe of the sons of Dan, Prince Bukai, the son of Eglai, from the sons of Joseph, from the tribe of the sons of Manasseh, Prince Kanael, the son of Aphod, from the tribe of the sons of Ephraim, Prince Kamual, the son of Shiftan, from the tribe of the sons of Zebulun, Prince Alazaphan, the son of Padnach, from the tribe of the sons of Issachar, Prince Faltiel, the son of Azan, from the tribe of the sons of Asher, Akaihud, the son of Shalmai, from the tribe of the sons of Naphtali, Prince Fidal, the son of Amihud, The ever-living commands these to divide the land of Canaan to the children of Israel. Chapter 35 
the ever-living spoke to moses at the fords of moab by the jordan opposite jericho saying command the children of israel that they must give to the levites as a heritable portion towns for residence with pastures around those towns for the levites and the towns shall be for their residence and the pastures for their cattle and their animals the pastures which you are to give to the levites outside the walls of the towns shall be a space of two thousand cubits you shall thus measure from the outside wall of the towns on the eastern side two thousand cubits and on the south side two thousand cubits and on the west side two thousand cubits and on the north side two thousand cubits with the town in the center these shall be the pasture lands of those towns you shall also assign to the levites these towns six cities of refuge to be provided for manslayers and beside them provide forty-two cities a total of forty-eight all these towns shall be assigned to the levites being for them and their pasturage but the towns that you assign from the children of israel shall be according to their numbers large and according to their fewness small each according to the extent of the district which they inherit shall give towns to the levites according to their shares they shall assign equivalent towns to the levites the ever-living also spoke to moses commanding speak to the children of israel and say to them you are now about to pass over the jordan to the land of canaan therefore appoint for yourselves cities of refuge that manslayers who have cut off a life by accident may fly to them and they shall be your cities of refuge from the avenger so that the fugitive may not be killed until he has stood in the presence of a jury for trial therefore shall you appoint six cities of refuge for yourselves you shall appoint three of the cities on this side the jordan and three cities in the land of canaan to be cities of refuge for the children of israel and for foreigners residing among you these three cities shall be cities of refuge for every one who has cut off a life by accident thus if he strikes any with an instrument of iron and he dies he is a manslayer the manslayer would be killed or if he throws a stone which wounds mortally and the wounded dies he is a manslayer the manslayer would be killed or strikes with an instrument of wood a deadly blow and the wounded dies from it he is a manslayer the manslayer would be killed the avenger would kill the wounder he would kill the wounder when found would kill him but if from hatred he stabs or shoots at one from a hiding place and kills or from hatred strikes with his hand and kills he shall be killed who has struck the wound the avenger of blood shall kill the wounder when he finds him but if undesignedly not from enmity one stabs or shoots another with any instrument not treacherously or kills with a stone not having seen or it falls upon a person who dies whom he did not hate and did not seek to injure then the jury shall judge between the accused and the avenger according to these rules and the jury shall deliver the accused from the hand of the avenger but the jury shall assign him to the city of refuge to which he shall go and stay there until the death of the high priest who has been consecrated with the oil of consecration but if the manslayer goes beyond the boundaries of the city of refuge to which he has fled and the avenger of blood meets him outside the bounds of the city of refuge then the avenger of blood may kill the slayer without blood being upon himself for he ought to have remained in the city of refuge until the death of the high priest but after the death of the high priest the manslayer may reside in his own district these shall be constitutional laws to your descendants in all your residences whoever cuts off a life the slayer shall be slain on the evidence of two witnesses but upon the evidence of one you shall not condemn a person to death and you shall not take any ransom for a life the manslayer who mortally injures shall die a death you shall also not accept a ransom from the refugee to a city of refuge to return to rest in the country until the death of the priest so that you may not corrupt the land you reside in for blood pollutes the land and the land will not cover the blood that is shed upon it for the life is in the blood consequently you shall not defile the land you dwell in amidst which i encamp for i the ever-living encamp in the midst of the children of israel chapter thirty six the ancestral chiefs of the family of the sons of gilad the son of machir the son of manasseh of the family of the son of joseph came before moses and the presence of the princes the ancestral chiefs of the children of israel and said 
the ever-living commanded our prince to apportion the land by lot to the children of israel and the prince was commanded by the ever-living to give the share of zelophehad our brother to his daughters but they may take any one of the sons of the tribes of israel for a husband and carry away their shares from the shares of our families and thus lessen the portions of the tribe to which they belong and take away from our allotted share and when the jubilee comes to the children of israel then that portion will be added to the portion of the tribe to which they have gone and the share of the tribe of their fathers will lose their shares consequently moses commanded the children of israel by instruction from the ever-living saying the argument of the sons of the tribe of joseph is fair this is the order of the ever-living to the daughters of zelophehad they may decide to be wives to any one who is good in their eyes but their husbands shall be only from a family of their father's tribe so that the portions of the children of israel may not be removed from tribe to tribe for all the portions of the ancestral houses of the children of israel shall be kept together therefore any daughter inheriting an estate in any of the tribes of the children of israel shall become the wife of one from her father's tribe so that the children of israel may each inherit the share of his father for no estate shall change from tribe to tribe after each portion has been allotted it shall be kept in the same tribe of the children of israel the daughters of zelophehad accordingly did as the ever-living commanded to moses and the daughters of zelophehad machla tirza kagla and milka and noah were given as wives to the sons of their uncles of the family of the sons of manasseh the son of joseph they were their wives thus their portions remained in the tribe of manasseh their father these were the commands and the institutions which the ever-living ordained through the medium of moses to the children of israel at the fords of moab by the jordan beyond jericho the end of chapters thirty two through thirty six and the end of the book of numbers recording by mark penfold